Hey, I'm Maddie. And I'm Caressa. You're not watching the Disney Channel right now. You're listening to Dreadfully, Dreadfully Twisted. Here we are back again recording this episode back to back from the last episode we just yep. did. Back again. <laughs> so, <laughs> what if I'm like in a great mood right now? I had so much fun with that episode. And I'm just like having fun now, so I'm just chilling and I'm talking very loud. We're like busting these out, we're like, let's go, let's well, go. I'm like this whole like <laughs> this past like this whole week I've been like kind of stressed and like I didn't really want to work on like crafting stuff, yeah. but I'm like I need to. And then I, once I got back into it, I was like, oh, this is fun. And like yeah. today, like by I got today because I got like no sleep this whole week. I'm like running on a pure adrenaline or something because I'm mm-hmm. like bouncing off the walls and I haven't felt this great in a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> like it's been a long time since i've been feeling like it. so like yep. i actually feel happy and i Aww. haven't felt like actual happy in like a couple weeks so like thank you <laughs> of course see this is why we're best friends we literally <laughs> just make each other's day i mean you did make my day that one day whenever i was really sad um when you surprised me with my birthday surprise gift Aww, so like yay. that did make me really happy i was like oh she loves I me like, I, hope you like it. I was like as soon as i found do you see that, like i, I have i have the snow globe up there on my Aww, table yeah. and then i have the eevee i ate the twizzlers already <laughs> and i'm in the middle of eating the lifesavers oh i love it but you i also like those? oh yeah they're so okay, good. good but yeah i have the card up too Aww, yay. but i have everything up and i have something for you but i have to pick it up tomorrow Aww. but i got something for you <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you, you did make my day that day too but like today i feel like actual like complete happiness without any sadness lurking so like it's nice <laughs> yeah there is no sadness around here and you nobody can pop the happiness bubble that we're in <laughs> there's no sadness around these parts <laughs> no not around these parts <laughs> okay so we brought you up now we're gonna bring you back down yeah so i apologize <gasps> <laughs> this one is gonna be just crazy and um if you are really like grossed out by like gore and like stuff like that you probably should skip this one um but we're doing or we could tell you when to skip the parts yeah, that we're doing two and one so because mine is kind of short and so she did it she researched one that's also kind of short so um we're gonna like right in the middle probably we're probably gonna switch over you know um, yeah if you want to fast forward through it then you know you just keep in mind mine at the end of the episode does have sexual assault so trigger warning for that yeah um and the trigger warnings for this one oh man okay <laughs> trigger warning it involves well murder um sexual assault drugs and cannibalism which is definitely the one that will disturb you for probably the rest of your life <laughs> well you're probably never gonna forget this one once you hear it just just like me because i heard this like three or four years ago and i just have not been able to forget it and it's just weird to me that it hasn't gotten so much coverage because this is probably like one of the most disturbing freaking cases i have ever heard in my life like i feel like this should have been on every news channel like everybody should have known about this like it's it's crazy. i feel like that happens though with cases that should be out there that yeah. aren't out there yep. And it's always, like, the most, like, gruesome ones. Like, I feel like the awareness should be spread, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, and the the bad thing about this case is there's only two pictures of the victims that I found. And there is, like, no information about them. Like, they're not one of the victims. There's, like, nothing out there. Yeah, that's kind of how it was whenever I did our first episode for Harvey Miguel yeah, Robinson. Yeah. I couldn't find anything on the victims either for that one. But... That's okay. We're yeah. still just still spreading the awareness yeah. in their story. So yeah. the victim story, not the person that's bad. <laughs> I can't be the only one to have heard this story. I mean, I know I, I don't. Been, but... I don't know if I have. I don't know. You might have. Um, you'll definitely know once you hear like what's going on. Yeah, you'll the definitely... only cannibal was cannibalistic ones that I've ever heard of was obviously Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer. And another like Ed Gein or something. Mm-hmm. I think it was. But okay, go ahead. Um, I think there was another big one, too. I can't remember who it was. Yeah, I, I can't remember either. What is wrong with you? <laughs> That's yeah. what i got to say. Yeah. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with do you? Do not eat people. Seriously, do not do it. I, I can't. Okay, 
I can't even eat chicken with bones in it. Nope. Me How can you eat a person? And if there's like a little dark part in my chicken, yeah. I'm like, nope. I'm like, oh, I don't want that. Don't That's want gross. This, this like, whole piece is like literally, garbage. if if I have chicken that has bone in it, I refuse to eat it. Yeah. I won't even take it off the bone. I just refuse to eat it. Mm-hmm. It has to be like a chicken breast that it's like, and I like look at it and I make sure there's no gross stuff yeah. in it. It has to be completely like regular. Yeah. <laughs> or I will not eat it. I refuse. Um, this one is probably gonna never want to make you eat something again, but. I'm just going to explain it to you whenever yeah, the time no, I'm, comes. I'm very, because, like, anxious to yeah. Okay. Here we go. Get ready. Um, yeah, you might want to skip now if you don't want to be disturbed. <laughs> okay. Um, this is the disturbing case of Joseph Joe Metheny. So, <gasps> I do know this case. I literally just heard this on a podcast literally, oh, like, really? last week. Oh, yeah. God. Okay. This is insane. Okay. <laughs> Joe Metheny was born on March 2nd, 1955, in Baltimore, Maryland, and was a part of a large family of six. Metheny's father was an extremely bad alcoholic and died in a car accident when Joseph was six. His mother was rarely around due to her working double shifts. Joe claimed his mother was dead and she sent them off to live with relatives. However, his mother was very much alive and she she denied sending off her children. He literally told everybody his mom was dead. That's kind of (laughs) crazy. But she wasn't? No, she was little, She was alive and well. Um, Weird. Yeah. When Joe was 18 years old, he joined the Army. His mother said that he had served in Germany during 1973. Joe also claimed to have served time in Vietnam, but there was ne- it was never proven. His mom also said that he didn't, so I don't know if that's true or not. Like, if he actually did serve time, because he said he did, his mom said he did. So, I don't know. After his time in the military, Joe became addicted to alcohol and hard drugs, such as heroin and cocaine. He lived in a series of homeless camps in the Baltimore, Maryland area, as all his money was spent on drugs and alcohol. However, he was able to land a job as a truck driver. And also, this is the weird thing, because I've, I checked like eight to ten websites yesterday mm-hmm. about this, and each one says something different. <laughs> Like, yeah, I do know whenever I listen to the podcast, I just did this, that um, they also said that it was hard to find, like, what's actual true. Yeah. Because, like, they said, like, the veteran thing, they weren't sure if yep. that was true or not, if he actually did go to, like, the military or whatever. But, like, yeah, a lot of the stuff you have to f- weed out, like, what's a myth yeah. and what's true and, like, all the stuff. Because so, like, a few of them said he was a forklift driver, a forklift operator, and a couple of them said he was a truck driver. I think he was a truck driver. Was a truck driver. I think so. Okay. That could be wrong. Yeah. But yeah, it's sometimes it's really hard to find the actual facts yeah. of the Forgive case. Forgive me if I get something wrong. Please tell me if you know that I got something wrong because, you know, I I tried my best to find whichever one was correct. <laughs> we'll cut out that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll, I'll edit it. I normally always edit like this sponsor <laughs> like that. Yeah. But like the last episode, I like kind of barely edited it because mm-hmm. like I was like, I got to get this out. So yeah. it's probably a lot of like mistakes on that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> It takes me, like, forever to edit. It takes me, like, for, like, an hour episode that one day. It literally took me from 9 p.m. to, like, 1 o'clock in the morning. So, really? Yeah. Yeah. It takes me forever. (laughs) Because I'm also picky. I feel like it would take me forever, too. (laughs) It's just, like, you have to listen to it, stop it, then go back, make sure it's right, make sure, like, all the red stuff is not too loud. After you edit it, you gotta check it again, make sure it's right. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Definitely takes long. (laughs) Okay. Um, his addiction seemed to be getting worse, and he was spiraling out of control. In 1994, Joseph Metheny committed his first murder. He murdered a 69-year-old sex worker named Kathy Ann Magaziner. Forgive me if I pronounced that wrong. I watched multiple YouTube videos, and that's what they pronounced it as. So that's, you know. <laughs> Who he buried in a shallow grave at his work site. About six months later, he exhumed Magaziner's body and removed the head. He buried the torso in a different grave, then placed the head in a box before discarding it in the trash. He later admitted that he strangled her, leading to the result of her death. After his arrest two years later, Joe showed police where to find uh, where to find Magaziner's body, and her skull was found with the help of, of dental records. Thank God for those dental records. Yeah, like, who would have thought that like, you could find who somebody was by yeah. their teeth? That's just crazy. And your teeth are technically bones, so I think they yeah. last forever. 
It is stated that Joe had a girlfriend and son, and his murder streak began when his girlfriend left him and took their child with her. When Joe came home from work one day and realized they were gone, he automatically assumed she was using drugs and was probably doing so with another man. He went to look for them at a homeless tent city campsite, campsite under Baltimore's Hanover Street Bridge, where she used to buy drugs. Eventually, he came across two homeless men, Randall Brewer and Randy Piker, who he believed were withholding information from him about the location of his family. This is just crazy because he was just so, like, messed up on drugs. He, he made himself believe that these two random people knew where his girlfriend and kid were. Like, yeah. it's just crazy. He murdered both of them with an axe that he had brought with him. He then allegedly saw a fisherman near the bridge where he committed four murders and killed him with a metal pipe. Joe Metheny was eventually arrested for these murders and even told law enforcement that he committed three more unrelated murders that same evening. However, this case was ultimately dropped due to a lack of evidence. Wow. <laughs> it's just crazy to me that the law is like, just because there was a lack of evidence, and like, he admitted to doing that. Like, it's just crazy to me. Yeah, I thought that if you confess that, that is the evidence. And they were just like, okay. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, his killings didn't stop there. In November 1996, he lured 23-year-old Kimberly Lynn Spicer with the promise of drugs. But he sexually assaulted her and stabbed her in the chest. Less than a month later, he was sharing drugs in his trailer with a woman named Rita Kemper. When Kemper refused to have sex with him and attempted to flee from the trailer, Metheny chased her, beat her, dragged her back into the trailer, and attempted to sexually assault her. Kemper also alleged that he tried to kill her and even screamed, I'm going to kill you and bury you in the woods with all the other girls. Just imagine somebody telling me that. Uh, yeah. My blood would just run cold. I'd be like, <laughs> uh, what? What? <laughs> I'd be so scared. Yeah. Metheny had hidden the body of Kimberly Lynn Spicer at his work site. However, fearing that someone would discover it, he asked one of his co-workers to help him bury it. His co-worker immediately told the police and Metheny was arrested that same day. As you should tell the police. Yeah. <laughs> so, good to good that. Good for him. Good, good for him. Good to I'm that co-worker. That. Oh, and wow. how stupid are you? Yeah. <laughs> how stupid could you be? We just tell him that I just killed this person. Yeah. Um, can you help me bury a body? Mr. Coworker guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. What, is that what you expected? Yeah, to like say? of course. Yeah, but. yeah, I'll help you bury a body. So I go to jail too for like hiding a body. <laughs> what? Oh my god. <laughs> the arresting officers were surprised when he went with them peacefully and without a fight. Metheny stated, "I'm a very sick. I'm a very sick person." Agreed. Um. Yeah. To kill somebody, you have to be pretty sick. Yeah. Very. But he's definitely, definitely going to be sick after Yeah. This. <laughs> yeah. Once the police began the questioning, <laughs> the true extent of his crimes were revealed. Metheny claimed that he had killed up to 10 people. Most of them were young, white, female sex workers whose body he dumped in the Patapsco River. Um, forgive me if I pronounce that wrong. I am not sure how to pronounce that. Um, for most of those victims, though, there were never any evidence found. That's just crazy. Ten yeah. victims, and well, there was only evidence found for how many of them? Like, I mean, he put them in the river, right? Yeah. So it might be hard to trace them back out of the river. But there was ten of them. Yeah. Like, that's just crazy to me. Unless he was lying about how many he killed. Yeah. During his interview, Metheny also revealed some disturbing information about what he had done with the bodies after murdering his victims. He revealed that, in some cases, he was turning them into burgers. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, if that is true, that's why you wouldn't find the bodies. Yeah. Yeah. But this was just... only some of them. This yeah. was, like, I'm not sure how many. Because he also but claimed that human that's... bodies taste like regular meat. Yeah, yeah. Um, He said that pork tastes so similar and that nobody would ever know the difference. Yeah. That's crazy. That kind of makes me, like, because I heard about this case, I don't know how long ago, but I just, like, actually heard it, like, last week, but... I heard about, like, a little bit ago, like, maybe, like, a year or so ago, and then after I read that, I was like, I'm kind of scared to go to, like, restaurants yep, and stuff me now, because, like, you don't know what they're using. I, like, I definitely won't be eating pork. 
um, if the burger is made with pork. Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I eat beef burgers, yeah, but me like. Too. <laughs> I'll eat like pork chops and stuff. Yeah. But that's if like if I buy the pork chops yeah, from yeah. the store. Uh I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. This just this it's, actually disgusts it me. It is. It's it so is gross. Disgusting. But it's also like not a hundred percent verified either, so it could not be true, but it could be true. So like the even that thought that's is so like crazy. if it's true then that's nasty. Um, this is true. I've seen multiple people comment about their family who live nearby like i've seen this one girl she said my grandma she lived near the stand and she used to eat there all the time and she said she is disturbed forever now like so he actually had a stand yeah yeah, yeah he definitely because i stand. heard that like it wasn't verified if he had like a food stand or not yeah he did he, he did? did oh yeah. gosh he definitely did. it's it's horrible <laughs> it's definitely disturbing. i feel so bad for all those people i'm so sorry you had to go through that and the people just like in the customers who yeah didn't know the it's kind of reminds me of the the um uh the charles picton case in canada yeah you ever yep. heard of that yeah oh uh, that reminds me of that yep oh that reminds me maybe of we'll too. cover that at yeah some point. i think we should do that one <laughs> that's definitely a crazy one too uh, that definitely reminds me of ugh. <laughs> what is wrong with you what's wrong what is wrong what with is you? wrong with you <laughs> seriously <laughs> That's all we gotta say. Like, how messed up in the head do you have to be? Seriously. In Joe Metheny's own words, I cut the meat up and put it in some Tupperware bowls and put it in the freezer. I opened up a little pit beef stand. I had real roast beef and pork sandwiches. They were very good. The human body taste was very similar to pork. If you mix it together, no one can tell the difference. Yeah. That's... I... (laughs) I'm not even gonna say anything. <laughs> didn't um the Kemper didn't she survive? Yeah, she survived. Yeah, she yeah. got away. Yeah, she got away. But um, I seen that she um spoke out about it or something. I it was like a paragraph. I couldn't fit it all in here, but mm. I'll send you the link. Okay. Yeah, because I remember that she did survive. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh thankfully she survived yeah i mean thankfully she survived but i'm like shuddering because of the fact of the food yeah yeah i just can't get off that right now indeed it seemed that no one could tell the difference or perhaps no one could have fathomed that they'd be that they've been served human meat it is unknown how many people consumed metheny's burgers metheny himself later said in an interview so the next time you're riding down the road and you happen to see an open pit beef stand that you've never seen before Make sure you think about this story before you take a bite of that sandwich. Yeah, I'll be thinking about it. Yeah, I'll be like, thinking about it. Do this I the rest actually want to eat that or should I not? Definitely not going to stop anywhere on the side of the road to get anything after this story. No. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not. I already have a hard time trusting food places. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I've always been like that. I'm like, are you really serving what you're really yep. serving? Yeah. But now this makes me question it even more. <laughs> well, there's so many people that live in Baltimore, Maryland, too. Yeah crazy Mm -hmm. metheny never showed any remorse whatsoever for the crimes he committed he claimed that the only thing he regretted is that he never got to murder his ex-girlfriend and the man she ran off with the man he didn't even know if she ran off with a man first of all he just assumed that to begin with and that's why he went and tried to look for them and they weren't she didn't want to be with you for obvious reasons yeah um, (laughs) uh you're crazy yeah a little bit (laughs) you're not right in the head there (laughs) Again, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? (laughs) Initially, Metheny received the death penalty, but the sentence was later changed to life in prison without the possibility of parole. On August 5th, 2017, Joseph Metheny was found dead in his cell at 62 years old. A lot lot of his victims are very hard to find information about, but I'm going to include the pictures as, you know, I only found a couple, but I'm going to include those. You know, if you want to check out our Instagram, we always post pictures of the victims and you know the the perpetrator the terrible scum of the earth that they are the monster yeah or monsters depending on what case we cover then the the beautiful victims that should have survived exactly and i feel bad for them you know i i already told you about this case the the horror core one Mm -hmm. i definitely want to cover i was going to do that one this week but i think that one i'm gonna i'm gonna do soon because that case really like 
I just still think about it for some reason. Yeah, this one here, I th- I think about because I'm just like, yeah. ooh, the food, like, ooh. Like, this <laughs> ooh. is one that, like, I feel like you can never forget. Like, this is just crazy. As soon <laughs> as you said the name, I was like, I know this. Yeah. <laughs> like, as soon as you said it. Because, yeah. like, even he, like, looks gross. Oh, my God. He looks like a m- yeah. monster. Let me pull up the podcast that just... Sorry. It's okay. Jeremy was asking me what pizza place. Cause <laughs> That's okay. He can't order online for uh, the other pizza place because I don't. And he doesn't want to call. So no. <laughs> he was like, "Pick between these two places." And I'm just like, uh, "Okay." Uh, oh, I was looking. How terrifying he is! Yeah, that's the picture I was yeah. going to show you because scary. This like, is the podcast actually that just covered scary. it. This is the and one. This is another one that I found. Ooh, ooh. And yeah. this is this was him when he got older. Oh, what? The heck? Yeah, that's I got that picture. I yeah. found that one. Oh, it said that he worked at a factory. A factory. That was another one that I heard. Factory forklift operator. But could that be at a factory? Yeah, I don't know. I think, yeah. It was, hmm. <sighs> I don't know. Truck driver, forklift operator. You're he was, still a monster. He was something. <laughs> he was something. He was still a monster, no matter what it was. Yep. So... Do not make people into burgers. Do not eat people. It is disgusting and terrifying and inhumane and absolutely disturbing. Thank you. Yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> Just be a, a kind human. Thank you for coming to our TED Talk about not yeah. eating people. Please, please be a kind human. Yes, please do. Okay, so um, now. Oh, yeah, um, if you want to continue, this is the end of story number one. We're moving on to story number two now. So, sorry. Um, so, what was I doing? ADHD. <laughs> Okay, so this this case that I'm going to cover now is a very heart-wrenching case, and I found it a few weeks, like a month ago, whenever I was researching the one about the um, YouTube streamer, mm-hmm. I found this one, and it, it was shorter, but I wanted to cover it, but whenever you said that you didn't have, like, yeah. enough, I was like, perfect, yep. so I was like, okay, I'll cover this. It might be a little bit longer, actually, now That's that okay. I'm, like, looking at it, but it's okay. Um yeah, it's very heart wrenching. Um, it was way too short. I, it was really short. So. That's okay. Um, so today, or now, <laughs> um, again, trigger warning. This involves a sexual assault. So if you do not want to listen to that, maybe either skip it, or I'll tell you a trigger warning later to skip it. But I'm going to be talking about Lily Sullivan. Um, Lily Sullivan. Sol- Lily Sullivan. <laughs> was an 18-year-old from Pembroke, Wales. She recently started attending attending college and was working part-time at a supermarket. Lily was a very talented artist, and she loved tattoos and music. Her friends described her as being mature and well-spoken for her age and that she was beyond her years. Uh, she was a very beautiful girl. Um, even pictures of her, she was very pretty. Um, and she was completely unaware of how pretty she was. <laughs> like She was just like so humble about it, but all of her pictures that I've seen, like, she's just so pretty. Yeah. Um, she was an advocate for being against, like, misogyny, sexual violence, and femicide. Uh, she used her Instagram as a way to raise awareness over these topics. And since she was 18, and at that age, you start to adapt to being an adult, and you want to try out your freedom and have fun. That's what she wanted to do. So she was now at the legal age to drink. That's the 18 is a legal age in Wales yeah. to drink. So she wanted to go out and have fun like a normal, like normal eighteen-year-olds do. I didn't do that because I wasn't normal eighteen-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> I did not do that. But hey, I mean, if whatever floats your boat. I just... mean, she wanted to have fun. So yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that at all. Basically, eighteen is R twenty-one. Yeah. Her eighteen is R twenty-one. <laughs> yeah, that that's true. Yeah. But even whenever I was twenty-one, I didn't party. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, my twenty-first birthday. I had a peach schnapps and pineapple juice, and then I had another half of one, and I went home. <laughs> I didn't, like, yeah, for my 21st birthday, we had, like, a surprise party, mm-hmm. and my dad handed me a drink, but I didn't really want to drink it, Yeah. <laughs> and then the drunkest that I've ever been was, like, the day before my birthday, mm-hmm. right, because my, my grandma passed away two days before my birthday, so the day after my grandma passed away, I went over to my uncle's house and I drank wine and then they, we had tequila shots because they want to celebrate my birthday at midnight. And then that was the drunkest I've ever been. That's the drunkest I've ever been. Ever been. And I was just like, wow, I don't really party that much. Yeah. I'm like, I kind of wish I did. Yeah. <laughs> so 
I give kudos for her for partying because I wish I would have done that because I didn't live my life really. So we're gonna have our own party one day. Yeah. Just in the house. You need <laughs> we're gonna to put on music. You need to come to Plaza this. with us. Yeah. And have margaritas. Um. Oh, anyway, it always looks so pretty when you post. Them. I know. I the love flowers. Plaza. I'm like, oh. It's 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 my happy place. You need to come with us <laughs> next time we go. Okay. Um. But anyway, um, so Lily went out to pubs and clubs in Pembroke. Lily's mom was very, was not very supportive, but she was supportive of the fact that her daughter wanted to go out and have fun. However, she was very cautious and vigilant and protective over, over Lily. Her mom always made a point to pick her up no matter what time it was. She was always there to get her daughter. If it was three o'clock in the morning or whatever, she was always there. As she always wanted to assure her daughter was getting home safe. And this breaks my heart. Um, her mother suffered 14 miscarriages before she was able to have Lily. So she had an unwavering commitment to Lily to keep her safe. Lily's present was more cherished due to this. She loved her daughter so much. And you can just tell by like her staying up till three o'clock in the morning to pick up her daughter. Like, I don't like, I don't know if my, my parents would do that. Like, (laughs) I'd be like, oh, you're on your own. But like, I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't know if that's actually true. Like, like, be home by this hour. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. so like the fact that her mom would g- get up at whatever time just to pick yeah. her up is like the sweetest thing mm-hmm. that i've ever read like she loved her so much and it's just it's so sweet um december 16th 2021 lily and some friends went out to the paddles nightclub in pembroke to spend time together and have fun during this night lily had met 31 year old lewis haynes who was also out with his friends he worked at an oil refinery and was well known was a well-known cricket player who was from the area throughout the night he was showing special interest to lily um while his friends was, were telling him to stay away because lewis was in a committed relationship at this time and was living with his girlfriend and he also had a child from a previous relationship uh-uh. eye roll <laughs> eye roll, eye roll. Eye roll here. insert eye roll like seriously you're in a committed relationship why would you go looking for somebody else? First of all, you're 31, going after an 18 year old girl. Yeah. Why do you have a child and a wife or girlfriend. Yeah, or a girlfriend. Wife? I can't. Remember. But I give kudos to his friends for being like, "Hey, don't do this. Like, yeah. stay away." Like. That's a good friend. Yeah. Um, he was involved with a. Cust- with a uh, he was involved in a custody battle over his child too at this time. So like he was going through a lot. So why are you trying to like mess everything up? like yeah i don't know Ugh. it's just annoying like you're in a committed relationship you should love that person and if yeah. you don't want to be with them leave exactly how hard is it like if you want to be single then go be single yeah just don't drag me along with it like- exactly and then his friends kept trying to remind him of his responsibilities and told him not to pursue lily for those reasons as well as Li- lily was much younger even though she was very mature for her age she was 13 years younger than him wow. so like yeah, it's a very big age gap. Yeah. You're not going to really have something in common with a 31-year-old. And a 31-year-old is not going to really have that much in common with an 18-year-old. It's kind of creepy. It's also like, if he was... Th- he's 13 years younger than her, older than her. So, like, he'd be 13 but whenever she was born. Yeah. Like, that's just weird. Like, I don't like age gaps, but, I mean, whatever. Like, if you're older, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Because, like... But, like, 18 and, like, 31, that's not okay. But, like, if you're, like, 31 and, like... 50 or whatever that's fine but like just not whenever you're younger i feel like that reminds me of like the guys who wait for girls to turn 18 yeah that's That's just creepy like that's just not right um however he did not listen to his friends and he kept trying to make moves on lily throughout the night they were seen dancing flirting and even kissing at one point and i'm not shaming lily at all she's just trying to have fun she's just trying to have a good time She's living her life. So, like, I'm not, like, I'm not blaming her at all. As a 31-year-old man, you shouldn't be doing Yeah, because like- when you're 18, you're still, like, you're still developing in your brain. Yeah. So, like, you don't really know exactly, like, what you should be doing with your life, really. Right. So, like, the reason why I'm not blaming her, and it's probably going to sound like I'm biased or, like, sexist or whatever, but, like, that's not what I'm trying to get at here. It's just, he's 31. He should know better, especially yeah. since he's in, like, a committed relationship. He has a child yeah. and stuff like that. And, like she's 18 so she's her brain's not fully developed and she's just trying to have fun like she probably was thinking like oh this isn't gonna go anywhere yeah. you know it's just gonna be like uh, i'm just gonna be like flirting with you and i'm gonna go home you know so like she's just trying to have fun but like at the same time like he shouldn't be doing this because he's so much older than her mm-hmm. 
and he ha- already has a relationship and all that stuff and like it, it would be f- like a, a little bit more okay if you know he didn't have all that stuff yeah you know yeah. but anyway like i'm not trying to blame anyone i'm not <laughs> not trying to be like sexist or anything i'm just saying like i that's just my feelings on it like you know yeah. whatever okay <laughs> but um and it was it was clear at, like after they were seen kissing and stuff that they were attracted to each other around 2 a.m they decided to go somewhere else that was quieter and were seen leaving together on cctv footage walking towards an unlit alleyway um that was down the road from the nightclub so you could see it on the cctv footage um it was like a little bit down the road so you could see like everything so you could see it um but at this time nothing seemed out of the ordinary it was just like you know like a normal like person you meet at and you just want to like go out and have fun with them or whatever but um little psa do not let your friends leave with some guy they just met yeah do not do that and i'm not blaming her friends but i'm just like do not let your friend leave i feel like they haven't seen horror movies (laughs) yeah i just just don't let your friend leave with some with some stranger just don't (laughs) um but again i'm not i'm not blaming anybody i'm just saying just just a little psa for the future if you and your friends are out somewhere um stand by the uh the buddy system yeah do not let your friend leave (laughs) be a good friend (laughs) keep that friend safe um okay so i gotta find my spot again i lost my spot okay so lily's mom called her around 2 47 in the morning and Lily said that she would be with her in just like a couple, a couple of minutes. Let me read that because I stuttered a lot. Lily's mom called her around 2.40. <laughs> <laughs> Talking is hard. Talking is hard. Uh, Lily's mom called her around 2.47 in the morning. And Lily said that she would be right with her in a couple of minutes. At this time, it is believed that Lily told him that she was leaving and did not want to go any further. And Lewis, who thought of himself as a ladies' man, didn't like this and didn't like rejection. He decided he was not going to take no for an answer. So he took Lily's phone from her and forced himself onto her. I should have put a trigger warning. (laughs) During this, Lily's mom was just desperately trying to get a hold of her. CCTV footage, which has not been released, but was grainy, the footage shown them in the alleyway and you could see the footage of lily's phone lighting up as her mom was trying to call her she tried calling her about 30 times just imagine that like in the footage you can see the light like the phone lighting up like multiple times because i think it's like on the floor or like the, like the ground or something so you just see it lighting up that's absolutely terrifying and just think about like her mom she's probably like why can't i get a hold of her like, what's going on like what like you know she's probably like panicking like, yeah. i'd be panicking i'd be like oh my god what's going on trying to show up yeah <laughs> she would know she was waiting for her oh, like two she? minutes away oh, she yeah. was picking her up at 3 a.m oh. and she was waiting for her she called her at 2 45 saying hey i'm here and then lily yeah. was like hey i'll be there in a couple minutes mm-hmm. and then she was waiting for her literally waiting for her two minutes yeah later lewis stated that at this point lily threatened him and said she was going to tell everyone that he sexually assaulted her he panicked and was scared of losing custody of his child, so he decided to strangle her to keep her quiet. At the end of the alleyway, it opened up to the mill pond. Lewis, not knowing if he had killed her or not, decided to dump her body in the pond. Okay, you could have avoided this, Lewis, by not interacting with her because you have a child and a girlfriend at home. Yeah. Like. Definitely could have been avoided long ago. So, like. It's your fault for also forcing yourself upon her. If you didn't force yourself upon her, then she wouldn't be threatening to tell everybody that you sexually assaulted her because you sexually assaulted her. Like, it's just wrong. What's wrong with you, Lewis? Yeah. What is wrong with you? What's wrong with you? So, at 3.08 in the morning, Lewis is seen running on the bridge of the mill pond, and two minutes later, he reaches the same gas station that Lily's mom was literally waiting at. Waiting anxiously for her daughter to show. Her mom notices Lewis and she notes that his behavior was really weird. He shakes his head a few times and hold his, holds his head in his hands, obviously showing signs of distress. At one point, he even makes eye contact with her. Then he disappears into the woods and goes home. When he gets home, he told his girlfriend that he strangled somebody, then convinced her to take him to his parents' house. Oh my god. <laughs> 
Once he gets to his parents' house, he confesses to killing Lily, how how he met her at the club and how he strangled her and then dumped her body into the pond. His dad then drove him to the mill pond and they saw Lily Sullivan's lifeless body. Then Lewis's dad decides to call the police at 412 in the morning, telling them that they found a young woman's body in the pond. Okay, telling them that you found it whenever you should say your son just killed this girl. Yeah. Like, oh, my son, like, oh, ring, ring, police, hello, yes, uh, my son just killed a woman, you need to arrest him right now. Like, that's what you should say. You yeah. should be like, oh, we just found somebody in the, in the, in the pond, you know, they, they drowned, you know, like. Okay, I get that you want to protect your kid, but this is not a, a way to protect yeah, your kid. Like, you uh, should, if, the, if your kids kill somebody, send them to jail. Yeah. I don't care who you are, send them to jail. <laughs> Let them learn their lesson inside the cell. Exactly. Because obviously there's something wrong with them. Exactly. You get them into a mental ward one of the exactly <laughs> um emergency services attempted to res- blah, blah, blah. emergency services attempted to res- resuscitate that's a really hard word to say yeah. resuscitate lily however she was pronounced dead at 602 in the morning she was found naked from the waist up her lace shirt was found next to her in the water her jacket and phone were found in the alleyway just like the cctv footage has shown that her phone was lighting up Police arrested Lewis at the scene, and when they did, he confessed to strangling Lily. Later on the same day, he was charged with the murder of Lily. In May of 2022, Lewis told the court that he was willing to plead guilty to manslaughter. He didn't want to plead to the higher charge of murder because he felt as though it was not premeditated and that he panicked and acted out of the moment. Uh, You still killed somebody, so you still murdered them. However, as as the trial went on, he realized how much evidence was against him and then in june of 2022 he pleaded guilty to actual murder the defense requested that the minimum sentence was 15 years before the possibility of parole they highlighted that lily had not been raped and that lewis had remorse by confessing and taking accountability for his actions um no he probably said that that because he was afraid of losing his son so he was like oh i need to say this right now so like you know i don't get in trouble uh you're still gonna get in trouble you shouldn't have just did it in the first place just don't do it 23 (laughs) the crown requested that lewis be sentenced to to 30 years minimum before the possibility of parole they said that even though lily had not been raped that there was still sexual elements to the horrible murder of her pointing out that lily was found naked from the waist up and that her shirt was found next to her in the water that it was lewis who removed her shirt against her will even though they both agreed to go into the alleyway and they had some sort of intimacy it was clear that Lily did not want to go any further or have intercourse. This was evidenced by that she agreed to leave the moment her mom called her to pick her up. She was like, okay, I want to leave now. Like, she was like, I don't want to be here anymore. So she probably was like, okay, I made a mistake. Like, I want to go home. Lewis couldn't handle the rejection. And that is when he decided to sexually assault Lily. And then August 26th of 2022, Lewis Haynes was found guilty of the murder of Lily Sullivan, and he was sentenced to 23 years minimum in prison before the possibility of parole. Well, he was sentenced to life in prison, but then he had um, he was able to be released in 23 years of in parole if he was like on good behavior or whatever, however that works. So he really was sentenced to life in parole, but the minimum was 23 years of him to be served if to, before he can be on the possibility of parole. Um, but I wanted to read, um, Lily's mom's impact statement, um, because I I read this and it it kind of really, um, hit me, you know, because it was just like, it's really sad, but this is a picture of him. That's her car and that's him walking. So he was literally like right next to her and that's him. He just looks like a monster. (laughs) But, um, her mother uh said he was pure evil and that she'll never forgive him in a very powerful impact statement read to the court by uh william hughes qc prosecuting she said the events of the night lily died go over in my mind constantly and i wake up in the night picturing lily in the water wondering if she knew what was happening if she was scared i wish i had stopped lily going out that night i picture the male responsible for lily's death who it is who i saw in the garage and wish I confronted him. Knowing that I was that close to her, I wish I had gotten out of my car and walked. I will always wonder if I could have saved her. She called out to her daughter. She called her daughter beautiful inside and out and forgiving, kind and loving, who loved music and was a talented artist who had been robbed of her future. So 
I just feel so bad because her mom blames herself. Yeah. And she shouldn't. Because it's not her fault that some monster decided to, that he was going to sexually assault her, like her daughter. She couldn't have known. That was like, yeah, she, she was about to come to the car. Like she yeah, she, she, she did everything she could to keep her safe, you know, and she was there to pick her up. She did everything right. Lily did everything right. Yeah. Trying to leave, you know, it just it wasn't, it was just a horrible monster who decided to take her daughter's life, to take Lily's life. That Perfect. shouldn't have happened. And I feel so bad for her mom. And she was way too young. She had a whole life. To she live. did have a whole life to live, and it's just it's sad. It is sad. And I'm I'm so sorry to Lily, and I'm sorry to her mom. Please don't blame yourself. Yeah, please do not. It is not your fault. And Lily knows how much you loved her, and she knows that you did everything in your power to keep her safe. So I just wanted to end on that note of Lily's mom because Lily is the thing in this you know like the um the main in my story here lily was the main picture i did not want lewis to be the main picture so yeah so that was both of our horrible cases today yeah <laughs> i don't know how to <laughs> <laughs> we're just unpacking it all <laughs> yeah it was it was a lot it was be nice to your friends be a good yes. person do not hurt anybody. <laughs> Don't yes. kill anybody. Spread positivity and love and yes. always use the buddy system when you're out places. If you're at a concert, if you're at the bar, buddy system. Do not let your friends walk out with anybody. Yeah. Keep them by your side at all times. Yep. Because <laughs> you don't want them to get into a situation they don't want to be in. It's a crazy world. Just be prepared. Yeah. Just like, like I was saying, I'm paranoid, so... Yeah. <laughs> Always be prepared. Just Okay. So we'll see you guys next week. And please send your stories to dreadfully twisted podcast at gmail.com. Go to our social medias at dreadfully twisted podcast on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and you can listen to us anywhere, pretty much anywhere where you listen to podcasts. And please spread us to your friends. That does not sound right. <laughs> <laughs> please tell your friends about us and please yeah. keep listening and we'll see you guys next week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.